Today we're going to provide a quick lesson in system dynamics and how they're applied to the economy. System dynamics is a form of notation mapping causes and effects. We're going to look at doing that for the economy and we're going to even look at how to use these cause and effect maps mapping to look at how stabilizing mechanisms can work in the economy. We are the uh, Swedish Sustainable Economy Foundation. You find us at tssef.se. This is part one, where we're just going to look at the theory. Um, part two, we'll be talking about some of the stabilizing mechanisms that we have discovered and uh, developed that can be used so that the economy performs to expectations and specifications. So e economics is full of terms like this, inflation, cost of borrowing, cost of production, cost of living. And we know that all of these affect each other. But the thing is, is how do we talk about and show and illustrate how these affect each other? Of course, we could write long uh, descriptive papers on this, and people do. But another way is to use visual thinking. So, for example, if we take consumer prices and inflation, we know if consumer prices go up, inflation goes up. So we can draw an arrow between the two. And then we'll put a plus showing that we expect consumer prices to go up and then inflation to go up. This, of course, can have other facts to us to look at interest rates and cost of borrowing. These both affect consumer prices. If interest rates go down, the cost of borrowing goes down and in turn the cost of production. Cost of production, of course, if that goes down, then consumer prices go down. So as you can see, we can have a plus, plus or a minus, minus just to show how we think these things affect each other. We could add the idea of energy production. Now, if energy production goes up, possibly energy prices will go down. And if energy prices go down, we've got a minus here, then the cost of production goes down as well. So we can even have a plus and a minus in our notation system. So this means that for each arrow, we could have a plus at the beginning, a plus at the end, or a minus and then a minus, or a plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus. Because what we've done is to uh, start to create a way of looking at uh, illustrating economic causes and effects. If, if we go back to our original um, diagram that we're looking at, say inflation goes up, well, wage demands would go up and that would, if they were met, meet a wage increase, that in turn would raise the cost of production. So if we add the pluses there, uh, we'll have a plus inflation, plus for wage demands, plus for wage increase, and finally, plus for uh, cost of production. This is a loop and we're writing a, a drawing an R here because it's a reinforcing loop. So if we can identify loops, we might also affect places to um, start to intervene with mechanisms to stop these, uh, which could be dangerous uh, loops from carrying on. This is a diagram we recently made in Kumu, kumu.io, um, with uh, several causes of inflation and several uh, causes that, that, that raise it and, and also dampen it to try and get a, a better idea. Some of the loops we discovered have to do with um, money supply, Money supply can affect inflation in several ways. Um, investment, 
can also affect the um, inflation. If spending power goes down, profits go down. If profits go down, investment goes down. Investment goes down, employment goes down. If employment goes down, spending power goes down, etc. It's a negative loop. And of course, the one we identified earlier, the wage price spiral, where inflation causes wage demands, which in, in turn cause production costs and then consumer prices. Now, in order to stabilize a system, engineers use something they call uh, control engineering. And it's quite simple. Uh, in order to ensure that a system behaves according to uh, or performs according to specifications, there's feedback from it to sensors that find out how it's performing. They send this feedback to a control logic. Uh, component. The control logic works out what to do, including activating an actuator. An actuator could be a brake or an accelerator or, or some other kind of um, control that affects the system. And then this goes around again. So the actuator is activated. It affects the system performance. That gives feedback to the sensor which goes to the control logic, goes back to the actuator again. And this can happen really rapidly if it's um, digitalized. And of course, in the control logic, there's also a human control. And uh, we'll give an example here uh, of the ABS braking system. So the human uh, presses the pedal, uh, signaling that the uh, demand on the system is that the car slows down. Now there's a, an, a sensor, a speed sensor, or sp speed of the wheel going in the, um, in the system. It feeds back to the control logic. Now if the brake has locked, so speed is zero, it tells the ABS computer what to do. The ABS will then um, override the pedal and let the uh, wheel uh, start to move for a short time and then again and so it's very quick in succession if you've activated abs you'll know that it goes boom 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 this is very very fast feedback in order that the car will better perform to your expectation which is that it will come to a stop slow down so how would this work in the economy? Well, we have one example. Um, inflation has a sensor. People measure inflation by measuring consumer price index. Now that always goes back to the central bank. And so the central bank will be able to see uh, changes in uh, consumer price index. They have an actuator that they can um, that they can uh, activate uh, in the form of interest rates. And so if they raise interest rates, then they can expect that all of these mechanisms start to uh, kick in where cost of borrowing is increased. And that goes on to uh, change um, uh, employment, that changes spending power, that changes spending. and etc etc so that's the way we can start to symbolize it and, and show it graphically in the next section of this video we'll start to think about how we can use these mechanisms in other places in the economy i hope you enjoyed this and fo do follow us on our website